Jesus Christ. Well, today I'd like to speak about the place that the Word of God should have in our lives and the place that it has in the, the Mass itself. So I want to start by telling about two different saints. One is Saint Jerome, the other is Saint Andre Bessette. Saint Jerome lived a very long time ago. He died around the year 419, and he was truly the first scripture scholar in the, in the church. He was fluent in many languages. Latin was his native language, but he also knew Greek, in which the New Testament was written, and Hebrew, which most of the Old Testament was written in. He probably knew several other languages as well. And as a priest, and then as a bishop and cardinal, he gave his life to studying the sacred scriptures. And so it was natural that the Pope would come calling and ask him, Jerome, would you translate the scriptures into a new Latin translation? And that's what we call the Vulgate. And so for 1600 years, 1500 years now, it has been the standard of translations in the Catholic Church. He was also influential in deciding exactly which books belonged in the Bible, because um, that was an important discussion too. And so St. Jerome, um, he encouraged other people to study the scriptures. He told this priest, he said, make sure you study it all the time. Don't ever set down the Bible in your life. And he encouraged parents to teach the Bible to their children and all of that. So he was, you know, a very serious scholar. On the other hand, we have someone like St. Andre Bessett. He's more recent. He died in the year 1937. He lived in Canada. At an early age, he was orphaned. And so he didn't have much of an education. By the time he was a young man, he could not read. He was illiterate. But his local parish priest saw within him a religious vocation and sent him to the Brothers of the Holy Cross with a note that said, I am sending you a saint. But of course, he had a difficult time because of his lack of education. And so they decided to make him the doorkeeper. He always joked, they showed me the door and I stayed there for 40 years because uh, he did that for the rest of his life. Um, he did learn how to read. Mostly he learned to read the Bible, which he read a little bit of and tried to commit to memory. So that way when he was working, he could think about what, what the Bible said. Also, when he was praying the rosary, he could contemplate what the scripture said about those mysteries. And he was a very holy man. He, was the, he, he founded this uh, church that's really beautiful in Montreal called the Oratory of St. Joseph. And when he died, one million people came to his funeral. One million people. I'll be lucky if a hundred come to my funeral. Um, and so we can see like there's a spectrum here, right? St. Jerome, a scripture scholar on one hand, St. Andre Bessette, a very simple man on the other hand. And we see that you don't have to be an expert in the Bible to become a saint. You don't have to be an expert in the Bible to go to heaven. However, all of us should take the Word of God into our lives in the way that we can. If God has given us the ability and the opportunity to study His Word in a, in a more profound way, we should take that opportunity. If, on the other hand, we're a simple person with, without a lot of the uh, necessity, necessi uh, necessary tools or the opportunities, then we should make use of what God has given to us in that way as well. Whether it's listening very closely to the Word of God proclaimed in the Scriptures, reading it ourselves, praying the Holy Rosary, which is really a summary of the Gospel, or um, whatever, it, whatever. We should spend a little bit of time in the Word of God, because St. Jerome taught us that ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. The Bible is like a gold mine, and the gold is Jesus. And so um, we should have that communication. We listen to his word and speak to him in prayer. That's very important. The other thing is that the word of God is timeless. You know, human opinions come and go. What's very modern today, tomorrow is going to be outdated. But the words that God has given to us are valid for all time and even into eternity. And so when we hold the Word of God within our hearts, we have eternity there. That's what St. Jerome told somebody once. He said, seek to know on earth what will, be, what will remain valid in heaven. So we should always do that.
And so just to bring this to conclusion, I want to speak a little bit about how we listen to the Word of God at Mass and what we hear. So you may know this, may, you may not. There is a three-year cycle of readings in the Catholic Church. We call it year A, year B, and year C. We're currently in year B, which focuses on the Gospel of St. Mark. A focuses on St. Matthew. C focuses on St. Luke. And St. John is uh, mixed in with all the years. And within those three years of readings, of course, every Sunday we hear a first reading, a responsorial psalm, and a second reading. Normally, all year round, the first reading comes from the Old Testament. And then we have the responsorial psalm, and the second reading usually comes from a letter of St. Paul. And they're chosen very carefully. So throughout the some seasons of the year, like Advent, Lent, Christmas, and Easter, the Gospel has a theme to it. But during ordinary time, like we are in right now, we are just reading through the Gospel of Mark one part at a time. And the Old Testament, the first reading, is always connected to the Gospel. So for example, today we heard Jesus announce that he, that he was starting his ministry and his first words were repent and believe in the Gospel. And so the first reading is from the book of the prophet Jonah, where Jonah announces to the Ninevites that they ought to repent. And so there's this connection there. It's supposed to bring us to understand that the Bible has a unity to it, from the Old Testament to the New. And so um, that's very important. During the weekdays, there's a two-year cycle of readings that we, um, that we go through as well. And so it's a little bit different. But um, exactly how much of the Bible do we hear? Well, I got the statistics here. First of all, you know that the Bible is very big, right? This is my copy that I've been reading for the last several years. People think it's kind of funny looking because it's an odd shape. But um, when, if you go to Mass every Sunday for three years, you will hear 3.7% of the Old Testament. And you will hear 40.8% of the New Testament. Now, I didn't sit down and run all these figures. Another priest did. He took his time to do that. And so um, if you come to Mass every day, including weekdays, for three years, you'll hear 13.5% of the Old Testament and 71.5% of the New Testament. So we see that it is really a small fraction of the Bible, but it is certainly the most important parts that we are reading every Sunday and, and every weekday during the readings. We do hear quite a bit of it. So once again, if you come to Mass every Sunday for three years, you'll hear 4,179 verses from the Bible proclaimed in the Mass. And if you come on the weekdays, you'll hear 9,067 um, passages or verses from the Bible. So and we do hear quite a bit of it. So my suggestion is that no matter where you fall in the spectrum from St. Jerome to St. Andre Bisset, that uh, every time we do gather for the Mass, that we are very careful to maybe prepare ahead of time to, do, to look at the readings, to prepare our hearts for it, to pray, to listen very attentively, maybe afterwards also to reflect upon what we heard, and then just to, to take it all in. St. Jerome also, he, he gave this example, he said, when the bread and the wine become the body and blood of Jesus, then we take very special care of that. Even if there's little crumbs that fall off the Eucharist, we are careful to gather those up. That's why we have the patent Mass. And he said, in a similar way, we should treat the Word of God. We should be very careful not to let anything fall to the ground without our understanding it. So if we, I know it's not always easy at Mass to, to listen attentively, but if we're prepared and we're ready, then we can hear those words. They can grow in our hearts, and it will be very beautiful. So uh, the Word of God, very important for us, and we should especially listen closely at, at the Mass when we hear these proclaimed.